So now that we've styled up our gallery, we're going to go ahead now and actually build the functionality into this. So back over to our code, um, we're already looping here, so we can leave this as it is for now. But what we want to do is go ahead and build in the functionality to instead of loop of, uh, looping numbers 1 to 10, we want to actually loop through images. So what we want to do is, uh, if we just close off this star sheet, is we want to create a new file, and this is going to be the PHP class for the gallery. Now I'm going to store this inside of gallery, uh, so I'm going to call this gallery.php with a capital G, just to signify that it's a class file. I'm going to go ahead and open my PHP tags here. Now the class is just going to be called gallery, so we define it with class and then gallery and then an opening and closing curly bracket. So now all of the properties and methods, um, or magic method that we're going to use, the construct method is going to go in here. Now this is, uh, you know, fairly straightforward. All we look at here is properties and methods, which are essentially just variables and functions. It's just the way we initiate the class or instantiate the class that's uh, different to what uh, we would do if this was procedural. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to first of all define the path and how we allow the user to uh, set the path. So we're going to create a public um, property called path and that means that it can be changed within the class. Now um, we're going to create a setter to set the path to a specific path. Um, otherwise what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the images folder is within the same folder as the gallery class so for example if I don't specifically define a path it's going to assume that the images directory sits in the same directory as this gallery class file so um, what we need to do is the first thing when we instantiate this class go ahead and actually set the path now we're going to use the magic method construct so let's just take a look at what this looks like so we say public function double underscore underscore construct and what this is going to do is it's going to do something when we instantiate the class so if we echo out uh, hello for example and we go over to index.php now the first thing we want to do is open and close PHP tags and we want to go ahead and then require this class file in so remember it's within gallery and it's called gallery.php so we want to say gallery forward slash gallery.php so let's just check that works just to make sure we haven't done anything wrong fine that that class is now uh, included so what we can now do is we can say gallery equals new so we use the new keyword and then gallery now we don't have to define uh, brackets like this we can just create new gallery uh, if we were passing in values here so for example uh, if I was passing in you know test here or something like that I could go ahead and pick this up here but we don't need to do that for now so let's go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, so what that's done now is it's instantiated, instantiating the class, the gallery class, and hello will be run because construct is run when we instantiate. So when I refresh, you see we get the word, word hello up there. So let's go ahead and get rid of that because that's not too useful. What we do need to do instead is go ahead and set this path. And by default, remember, we're going to set it to the path to um, assume that images is within the same directory as the class. So to access this variable or property up here, we say this path with no dollar sign here. So we're not including this dollar sign like this. And then we say equals. Now what we're going to do is we're going to say dir with two double underscores. And then we're going to append on backslash images so if we go ahead and just echo this you'll see that oops uh, if we just go back and ah, there we go in the line with the terminator and there we are so this is the path the assumed path if um, we don't specifically define a path now we haven't included the ability to find a path yet so this is just what will be used and this is absolutely fine it's basically just you looking my C drive and blah 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 all the way through to the image gallery folder that we're in here and then forward slash gallery forward slash images so it's assuming that it's within there if this class file was in a different place um, then it would assume a different directory so if this was in the root directory it would look for an images folder in here so anyway, what we now want to do is build a method to specifically define the path or set the path. So we create a public function set path. Now we need to be able to pass a property into this. So let's just take a look at how we would actually use this. Let's pull this down a little bit. 
So we would say gallery set path and we would say images forward slash or gallery rather forward slash images. So that is how we would set the path. So we're in the root directory here. We're going to say we want it in gallery and images. So that's how we're specifically defining the path. So the functionality would be we pass the path in to this method here. And that path now is this value here. And within this, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and say this path equals path. So now if I just go ahead and just get rid of this echo and echo this out instead, now that we've run this method, we will now get the uh, basically the value that we passed in. And this is absolutely fine because relative to this directory, gallery images is fine. Gallery forward slash images. And there we are. There are all our images and our thumbnails. So we can do that either way now. So we're giving uh, ourselves or whoever's using this the ability to pass in their custom directory. And we can go ahead and get this echo now. What we do need to do though is just a little bit bit of uh, tidying up here. If I do pass in a forward slash here, I want to go ahead and just get rid of that because what we're going to be doing is in here we're going to be defining that we want, or rather inside of here somewhere, we're going to be defining that we, we want it forward slash something. So we want to go ahead and just clear this uh, forward slash um, you know, otherwise. We don't really have to do this, but it's a nice little touch. So what I'm going to do is in here, I'm going to create an if statement and I'm going to say if substring. So this is going to um, take a part of this string that's been passed in. So path minus one. Now, this will basically give us the last character. So if we just echo that, then you can see that we get a forward slash. So it's basically taking this character here. Um, so let's get rid of that. So if this is equal to forward slash, then we want to say path equals substring. Um, and this time what we want to do is we want to say path zero minus one. And what this will do is chop off the last character and keep the, um, the, the you know, the path um, without this. So now what we can do is go ahead and echo this again. And we'll see if we've got gallery images, despite the fact we have passed in gallery images with the forward slash at the end. If we get rid of the forward slash, we get exactly the same result. So we've applied a little bit of logic there just to check the path and just tidy it up. Um, we didn't have to do that, but it helps. OK, so the next thing we want to do is go ahead and just create a generic um, or and this is going to be a private method. So this is only going to be able to be accessed within this class. Um, so if we say public, uh, sorry, private function get directory, all this is going to do is provide generic functionality to just get the contents of a directory and return it. So we choose path here. We, we have the ability to define a path. And we return scan dir, uh, and then we supply the path. Now, what does scan dir do? Well, let's just take a look at this. We're going to change this to public just to test, um, and we're going to do a print r, which is going to give us the contents of the uh, of an array, sort of in our browser output. I'm going to say gallery get directory, and then I'm going to choose a path. So I'll just say gallery forward slash images, and this is going to return an array of all of the files within the directory I specified. So you can see at the zeroth element, we've got a dot and a dot dot. This is just sort of standard notation for the directories. And we've also got this as well, which is thumbs, which is a folder. So we want to ignore this and ignore these. And we'll look at the functionality that will uh, help us ignore them later. But these are what we're interested in. So we've created this generic functionality to read from a directory. Um, and we now know that we can do that, but we want to keep this private or protected. Um, just basically so, you know, there's no access from this, you know, within here. Okay, so now comes the main method, and this is the last method that we're creating, and this is going to be the uh, a public method called get images. So this is going to return all the images from the path that we've specified here, whether it be um, the default path or the path that's been set by the user. So get images is going to take an optional um, uh, parameter and this is going to be extensions and that's going to be an array. 
So what we're going to do is by default provide JPG and PNG as the extensions that we want to pull back from this directory. So this is basically um, saying, well, we have this parameter, but by default, it's this array with JPG and PNG in. So what we now want to do is go ahead and create a variable in here, and that's going to access the private method that we created, get directory. So it's basically going to then store all of the um, you know contents of the directory that we provided initially. So this is going to be this path. So if we go ahead and return images, we can now see that within here we could do a print or we could say rather images equals gallery get images. Um, and then we can optionally provide this array, but we'll look at that functionality in a moment. And I'm going to go ahead and print R on images. And what we might do, might as well do, is just uh, some preformatted tags here just so it looks a bit nicer. So this is now our returned array of images. Now, by the end of this video, we're going to get to the point where we have all of these. We're going to have a, th a, a thumbnail here um, and a full path. In so these images are going to include the path. And we're going to get rid of these dots here in this thumbs folder here because we don't need that in there. So let's get started now on actual some of the logic in here. So we're going to basically loop through all of the images so we're going to say for each images as image, so this is the first one's going to be dot, then the next one's going to be dot, dot, and then so on. What, we, what do we want to do? Well, we want to, first of all, uh, determine the extension of each of these array items. So we want to say extension equals. Um, so this is a little bit tricky, but we're going to just set this to image for now. Now, the first thing that we're going to do is explode this uh, string value by a dot. So what this has done now is this has given us an array and it's going to give us an array if we just do a print r on extension you'll see it might look a bit messy um, in fact let's do a print r with pre tags okay so that is now going to look like that. So what's happened here is um, the first array is the dot, and that's been exploded by a dot, so we have two of these. The second one is uh, the two dots, which has been exploded by two dots, so that's three elements. These are the ones that we're interested in, so what we want to do is check these. Now this is now the extension of the file that we're dealing with, and then thumbs we want to ignore as well. So how do we determine this? Well, we can use the array that's been passed in to determine whether we want to output a JPEG or a PNG or anything like that. So instead of doing that, which is, again is useless, we want to go ahead and say end like that. So I'm going to go ahead and echo this and then just pop a break on the end for example, and we'll now see that we've got this. So we've now got um, you know the sort of extension here of the last element of the array so what we want to do now is say str to lower and what that's basically going to do is just if we echo that again sorry we get a load of jpeg so we get jpg 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 and then thumbs at the end which we want to ignore so in here what we now want to do is create an if statement and we want to check that this extension exists within this array whether it's been passed in or left as the default. So we use the in array function. And this typically takes two parameters. The first one is what you're looking for, and the second one is what you're looking in. So we want to look for the extension in extensions. So if that's true, or rather we want to say if that's not true, that means that the image is not a valid image. So we want to go ahead and unset it, and this will just remove it from the array. So how do we know which you know image to unset? Well, we can add to this array, uh, or this loop, and we can say index. This is now going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. So a 0 indexed uh, array, and this will be the index. So we can unset images, and then we access the index like that. So now what we can do is if we return images, we can now see that if you keep an eye on this part, that the dots go and the thumbs go because these are valid files. Alternatively, 
if within here we were to say get images array png they all go as well there's no images so um, if we would say array jpg then we get jpeg images so we'll leave that as it is now because we'll just assume that we only want to get jpeg images okay so now what we want to do is go ahead and in gallery um, create an else on this if statement so if this is a valid image what do we want to do well we want to say images index equals array now why would we want to set the index to an array rather than the value it contained well what we want to do is uh, if I just pull this down we want to create a full key and this is going to be the full path and we want to create a thumb key and this is going to be the thumb so now what's going to happen is instead of these images we have lots of arrays with full and thumb in so now that we've filtered down the actual images we want to output we want to go ahead and create the path and then the actual image name so what we do is we say um, this path and then we append on a forward slash and then we append on images index like this or we could just append on image so image so now it looks like this gallery forward slash images forward slash and then the image name so we've now filtered it down then we're outputting the full path now we know that the thumb path is similar to the full path but the only difference is it's within the thumbs directory like that so we inside of images we've got this thumbs directory so we just do forward slash thumbs and then the same image name so now we've got an array of images that we want to output with a full path and the thumb path so now that we we're sort of returning this what we do want to do is just create a slight sort of difference to this return here and we want to say count images so we're doing a ternary operator so we're basically saying if the count of images is a positive number return the images array otherwise return false and what this is going to do is allow us to check whether there are actually images before we start to output them so um, let's just test this out um, we'll use var dump within our uh, main directory uh, sorry our main fo uh, file here so at the moment we're echoing um, print art images so let's get rid of this and say var dump images so at the moment because we're selecting JPEG images these do exist so we get the output here so this is just a, a sort of rough dump of all of the stuff of all of the images but if we change this to PNG you'll notice that now this turns to false so now it's uh, actually we're just we're outputting something else here aren't we let's just get rid of that echo because that's annoying so now we're outputting false and this will allow us to put this into an if statement to determine whether there are actually images to display so in the next part we'll be doing just that and then we'll be looping through to output our images.